again. I'm Paul Haywood with Winfield Solutions and we're out in a field today of some corn hybrids. We're going to show some uh, a new disease that's coming to play here. This is the US 104 uh, crop cam. And with me today is Jamie and Michael from Co-op Elevator Association uh, based out of Ocheden. And so uh, Michael and Jamie, you know, I want you to walk through a little bit of what we're looking at here in this field. Uh, we got two different hybrids side by side. And I want to talk about what you're seeing in this new leaf disease and what uh, identify it and how to, what our processes would be as we look at this plant disease. Yeah, so in this particular hybrid here, we pulled this leaf sample and as you can see, we got all this uh, gray tissue here. Um, pretty far along disease, which is called Goss's wilt. Um, if we move to the bottom of the leaf, we can kind of see this water soaked area, which is pretty common towards a bacterial disease. Um, and then the earlier stages you can kind of feel it too if you run your hands or fingers over it. Um, get a little bit harder to, I guess, see some of it. Um, and then if you move over to the next row, you can see some of the healthier leaves, what they look normally should look like now. Um, we're seeing a lot of this goss as well. You can see it kind of on the sides of the road um, as you're driving down the road. Um, and where do we see it most often, Jamie? Where do you, from position on the plant from now? Uh, most of the time you'll see it on the on the upper end of the plant. Uh, can be confused with a little bit of top dieback, which is uh, you don't really know until you actually get out there and uh, <clears throat> kind of determine like what Mike said earlier. You kind of can see them water soaked areas of that leaf and then uh, that's how you kind of determine whether or not it's uh, goss as well or not. So Mike talked about, you know, identifying as goss as wilt. Is there a treatment for this particular disease? Uh, for goss as wilt, there is not a fungicide that treats it since it is a bacterial disease. Um, I guess the bi biggest thing we can do as far as the management, best management practice is to uh, identify a hybrid that has good tolerance for it. Um, there's a few hybrids that are, are better than others. Um, quite a few of them are susceptible. That's what makes this disease something that we have to look, look at um, extensively going into the future. Um, our corn on corn acres is something that we also have to focus on. Um, we have that inoculum that's overwintering in the soil residue. Um, that gives us a prime candidate for goss's wilt. And, but it's just once it gets in the area, it's pretty mobile and it's uh, something that's going to be a bigger player, I guess, in the years to come. Well, we want to thank everybody for watching uh, at least the CEA sponsored uh, crop cams this year. Uh, this was the sixth one that we did with the co op. and. Uh, we're fortunate to have the folks watch this and learn a little bit more, more about what current events are going on in the territory. So uh, for once again, uh, for US 104, this has been one more crop cam. Thank you. Sounds kind of bright when you're not used to it. Yeah.